All right, now let's move on to Yemen, where there's uh, quite a bit going on here, a lot of important news. Um, we had in the past week Saudi Arabia bomb the hub of where the, the building where the internet, I guess, typically, you know, like the underwater pipeline or uh, cables and everything, I guess they come through the Red Sea into this building that I believe was in Hadeda, and Saudi Arabia bombed that. And so for the past four or five days now, uh, this being recorded on the 24th in the evening. Uh, so, you know, going back to maybe the 20th or so, uh, there has been no internet in Yemen. Now, immediately when I read that the internet had been knocked out in Yemen, I was very concerned because uh, typically when we see the internet go out in places uh, like in Myanmar, like in uh, Kashmir, like in Tigray, this means that war crimes are being committed by, you know, the air power or, you know, the, the overwhelming force. And so that absolutely seems to be either what happened. It, it, I guess it could be coincidence. Like, I don't want to, I, I can't for sure say that Saudi Arabia took out the internet so it could bomb a youth soccer game in a migrant prison, but that's what happened. And it's unclear exactly what the death toll is. As of the recording of this show, uh, I had read about 87 people uh, had confirmed been killed uh, in these two bombings. Again, one being on a youth soccer game and the other one being on a detention facility that apparently held migrants, including minors. Uh, so, you know, absolutely horrific crimes being carried out by Saudi airstrikes. Uh, a fragment at the site of the prison uh, found that it was a Raytheon made bomb. Now, maybe uh, Northern Yemen is so littered with bombs that, you know, at this point there's just uh, bomb debris around or, you know, the Houthis have uh, enough like bomb debris that maybe they plant as propaganda or something like that. Certainly just finding the scraps of the bomb at the site don't, Definitely make it so that that's the bomb that, you know, uh, collapsed this, uh, again, detention facility and killed uh, scores of people. But, you know, knowing what we know about how Saudi Arabia has used the U.S. May bombs in Yemen and in cases where they've absolutely been confirmed to have carried out the, uh, you know, used the American May bombs to carry out, say, like the bombing of children, the bombing of funerals, weddings and things like that. Shouldn't be surprised that they used an American made bomb uh, in this case. Now, this, of course, comes after the Houthis, uh, the group that controls no northern Yemen, the area that's being uh, bombed by Saudi Arabia, launched an attack that hit uh, a fuel depot and uh, did some damage at the an airport, international airport in the UAE uh, last week. And so these are really major attacks being carried out by Saudi Arabia uh, in Yemen right now. The death toll is expected to increase fairly significantly uh, in the attack on the prison in particular uh, because there are so many wounded, apparently over 200 wounded. And uh, with the medical facilities in Yemen being in short supply prior to this, uh, particularly in northern Yemen, uh, the reports are that all the medical facilities are completely overrun. Now, I have um, continued, I, I reached out to a couple people uh, that I, you know, communicate with in Yemen and have not heard back from them yet, uh, suggesting that to me, the internet is still off, and I've also seen a couple people post and comments on the video where uh, one person sent me a message saying that they were still unable to reach uh, their family who, who lives in Yemen. And so uh, it does seem like the internet continues to be turned off in Yemen and that Saudi Arabia is waging a fairly uh, significant bombing campaign on uh, northern Yemen tonight as I record this show. And, and so expect an update later in the week on Yemen or maybe next week on, on kind of the results of what's going on there. And especially after the internet net uh, is widely available again in Yemen, uh, that way I could hopefully get some more information on what's going on on the ground. We get some more reporting and can really break down uh, what Saudi Arabia is doing to that country. Now, earlier today, there was uh, this happened on Monday, the 24th, the morning of Monday, the 24th in, you know, Yemen, UAE, the Arabian Peninsula. There was a ballistic missile attack or it's reported to be a ballistic missile attack uh, that 
was targeting somewhere around Abu Dhabi. Uh, that, that's what was reported, that the UAE and U.S. missile defense systems engaged these missiles. Uh, the interesting, I guess, part from CENTCOM is it says U.S. forces at uh, the, the air base near Abu Dhabi uh, in the UAE engaged two inbound missile threats and, and says, you know, no nobody was hit. But uh, the possibility may be that the uh, U.S. person, you know, that this U.S. base was actually the target here or potentially the U.S. personnel uh, would, would be interesting, I suppose, and uh, could have real consequences for uh you know how much and what the u.s is willing to do directly in yemen uh some of the few strikes that have been carried out by the u.s directly uh omitted at least against the houthis were after the houthis were launching uh anti-ship missiles into different ships in the red sea and uh the al bab and strait there and i think a couple of those missiles landed within a few nautical miles of u.s ships and so the u.s directly bomb houthi targets and Yemen. So I, I wonder if this will actually result in uh, some U.S. bombing of Yemen. Now, one interesting thing, I guess, is that uh, the UAE, uh, maybe because the CENTCOM reported that they used the Patriots to intercept these uh, inbound missiles. The UAE also report they use systems. And I read that for the first time, uh, the THAAD uh, interceptor system was used. Now, I guess it could have been used by the UAE in the attack last week that actually where, where the, the targets are, where the projectiles hit their targets, but those were crewed in, uh, cruise and drone, um, cruise missiles and drones where these, I, I believe were ballistic missiles, which I think are a little bit more what the, uh, THAAD, uh, system is it intended for, um, just kind of curious as to what happened there. If we gain more reporting as to how that system functioned and it may be potentially the U S also engaged, uh, because the UAE were, were using that system and, uh, the Patriot missile system. And at this point, at least against Houthi projectiles it is a little bit more, uh, proven. The UAE is also importing a new air defense system from South Korea. Uh, the, the English name for the system is the uh, M-SAM-2, and they're going to pay uh, $3.4 million for a whole bunch of these systems. Uh, don't know exactly when they're going to arrive in the UAE and everything like that, but uh, the UAE is beefing up their air defense system. And then last story on Yemen is that the U.S. claims uh, that it intercepted a ship in the Gulf of Oman that was smuggling, I believe, 40 tons of urea based fertilizer. And the claim is that that was going to the Houthis in northern Yemen and that, you know, urea based fertilizer can be used in explosives. I, I guess I don't want to speculate on if the, you know, that was actually going to be the case or not, just because um, I don't know a whole lot about fertilizer bombs and it doesn't seem like a great thing to just kind of talk about on the internet. So uh, I'll leave it up to maybe people who are a little bit more experts on this to hopefully write a paper or something that I could just link to on, you know, if this, w if the Houthis could actually uh, effectively use like urea bombs is somehow against Saudi Arabia, who's waging an air war against them. I'm not sure that this is something you could load up on ballistic missile. Uh, now, I guess the other thing uh, to mention is that apparently the ship was previously accused by the U.S. of smuggling arms to Yemen, and they had released that ship in the past couple of weeks to the Yemeni Coast Guard. And now maybe there's two Yemeni Coast Guards or something like that, but as far as I'm aware, the Yemeni Coast Guard is controlled by the Houthis, and so I'm not sure maybe if like this was an entrapment plan by the U.S. where they released this ship back to the Houthis and then left some tracking devices on it and intercepted it again or what. And um, 
the the other point I wanted to make on this was just I, I think it's very possible to you know that this fertilizer was going to be used as fertilizer. There's reports that uh, particularly in northern Yemen, people are going back and doing a lot more farming because of how isolated that country has been uh, from the rest of the world for so long. And so you know people going back to farming has actually in some ways alleviated the food crisis in Yemen. And so maybe this is just the sadistic U.S. Saudi food war against Yemen where we're going to deprive them of fertilizer and they're really in no way concerned about this being used uh, as a weapon.